Hello everyone, my name is Sonam Narayan. I'm currently pursuing BA LLB from University of Petroleum and Energy Studies. I'm in fourth year and I'm currently interning under the lectures and complaints. And today in this video, I will be talking about the preamble and its basic salient features. So the constitution of uh, India was adopted on the 26th of November 1949 by the Constituent Assembly of India. Whereas when we look the history of the, uh, when we look at the history of the preamble, we see that it was adopted by our Constituent Assembly on 22nd of January, 1947. Now, how, how on which objectives this preamble was being adopted? So the preamble was adopted or by Jawaharlal Nehru's objectives resolution. Now, come, moving further, let's know what what was the main what is the main purpose of the preamble of the Indian Constitution. So, the preamble aims to set out the goals and objectives which the Constitution of India aims to achieve. Okay. Now, it also uh, it also aids it during the interpretation of articles in certain matters. Judiciary often looks uh, or uses preamble as the interpretation of uh, articles when discussing various cases. Um, moving forward, when we uh, see the components of preamble, there are few uh, very uh, essential elements uh, or components which we see in the preamble. First of all, that is that we, we see that preamble states that the source of the authority of the constitution lies with the people of India. Preamble also states that India is a sovereign, socialist, secular, and democratic and republic state. Thirdly, these objectives which are set by the preamble aims to achieve justice, liberty, equality, and promote fraternity to maintain utility and integrity of the nation. So uh, let's moving further. Now we will be seeing the key words in the preamble and their meaning. So first of all, the first uh, word which we are going to deal with is the word sovereign. What do what sovereign means in the preamble? So the term sovereign means that now India is has its own independent authority and it is not ruled by or governed by any external uh, any external force. So it, the India is being governed by its own people. India has the own power to make laws which can be subjected to certain limitations, but it is an independent authority and no external force can control it. Like earlier during colonization, what used to happen uh, was that the laws were made by the Britishers and it was implemented in India. And so uh, we were governed. But after the independence, we uh, we we we, uh, we call ourselves as sovereign, which simply meant that now we we do not nobody holds the power to govern us anymore and it's we the indian who are going to govern ourselves and we have the independent authority of ourselves now secondly moving forward further the another main uh, element is uh, the term socialist now the socialist was not initially added in our constitution of india uh, uh, in our constitution in the preamble it was added in the preamble by 42nd amendment 1976 it was added as uh, as our lawmakers felt that that the india aims to achieve the social ends through democratic means for the total welfare of the citizens of the india and therefore it was a necessity that the word socialist shall be adopted so democratic socialism, we are not totally socialist, neither we are totally capitalist. So we believe in the mixed economy structure where both the sectors shall exist to ensure that there is a proper and total uh, welfare of the citizens of the India. Moving further, the another important, uh, uh, important component of our preamble is that it says that we are secular. 
what do we mean by secular so it was also uh, not adopted initially uh, like uh, in this beginning uh, when the constitution was enacted it was adopted in this 42nd constitutional amendment so socialist and secular came uh, came into the preamble by the 42nd amendment of the constitution all right so it states that india does not have any official religion all right so every person in india every individual in india has the right to uh, to uh, to uh, to follow any religion uh, which they want and therefore they shall get equal respect protection and support from the state so the state shall not intervene regarding religious matter of an individual every individual has their own right to follow any religion of their own choice okay so if i want to suppose uh, follow a religion xyz uh, the state do not have the power to interrupt me or to intervene in these matters of me and say that okay you cannot follow this religion i have my right to follow the religion which i want to do moving further the another important component of the indian constitution is that it states that we are democratic in nature what do we mean by democratic democratic in nature so it states that india has its own constitution and its authority the authority of the indian uh, of the in, uh, india will be from the will of the people which uh, will be expressed in an election and through the election the it states that it gives the people of india the power to choose their representatives to choose the representatives who will govern them so we the people of india gets the right to choose our authority and be governed by them so therefore it's the, we are democratic in nature moving further another important component is that in uh, the preamble of indian constitution says that we are republic in nature what does it mean by that it means that the people of india directly or indirectly selects the head of the state all right now uh, we have uh, our president as the head of the state and he is elected indirectly by the uh, people of india uh, now let's see the interpretation of the supreme court regarding preamble in a very famous case and a leading case of preamble Berubari Union case. It was stated by the Supreme Court that preamble is a part of constitution, but it cannot be used as a guiding principle uh, if a term in any article of the constitution is ambiguous or has more than one meaning. But in the other case of the Kishwanandi Bharti versus State of India, the Supreme Court overturned its earlier decision and stated that the preamble is a part of constitution and can be amended under article 368 of the constitution also uh, in various other cases after the keshwan and bharti uh, the supreme court uh, uh, supreme court followed the uh, followed the judgment laid down in this case and stated that preamble is a part of the indian constitution thank you